Um, it's a little faster now because of the talented Arcanist. You have like redundancy yeah. with your combo and higher damage break points that can happen earlier on with less discounts. Uh, but we'll talk about the priest later. Right now, it's Mage versus Paladin. Paladin for No Hits Gamer has one drop Sword of the Fallen. Nice. Yep, that's what you want. We know that. Although with coin, you know, the one drops, it's still nice. But it's you know, the fraction less nice, I guess. There's no two drop particularly, so why not have a one drop? Save that coin for a while. Oh, but Moses got Desk of Dick of Lunacy, so that was a good game. Well, <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> Muzzy's facial facial expressions will still never get old. Ooh, <laughs> oh, which one do you want to do? Okay, deck of lunacy first, then yog it slow. This, yeah, oh, you can't yog it. It's gone. <laughs> that, is, that is the uh, standardly accepted best way to sequence it. If you're playing against just a general Hearthstone deck, is to Lunacy first and Flow second. Um, the situations where you would uh, Flow first and Lunacy second are when you're playing against like hyper aggressive decks, um, uh, because there's more options. There's uh, you get nine mana spells instead of ten mana spells, and you get Libra of Hope, which is the only. It's like, oh, I don't even care. Uh, oh, ooh, oh. I don't know why I'm moving and eyeing. Because it's going to be a clown fiesta. Yeah. Quite clearly. No Hands is just curving here. Really, really tidily, though. So, although Murz has done all the good things, he'd, he'd better not whiff at any point because No Hands can just clean this up. That is a whiff. That's a whiff. <laughs> So the uh, uh, secret that was pulled here is uh, Avenge uh, for No Hands Gamer. What That's so pretty helpful. Do? Yep. Probably just Tiny. runic carvings uh, for non-attack mode, I would say. He agrees, I think. Yep. Oh, it's the Leapum of Damage Face. That's a Judgment. good one. That is a good one. Except oh, right now oh. it's expensive. We'll yeah, but he's got stuff to fill the gap, right? It's not like he's got to wait until turn seven doing nothing. He has got, you know, this double outdoor. He's got other stuff going on. He's going to be able to obviously draw off the top as well. I think he might be in a good spot here, TJ. I, I want to go against the the person who drew Flow and Lunacy. I'm I'm on the Paladin here. I mean, it entirely depends. You, you don't even know what's in Mercy's deck. How could you call anybody a favorite? I mean, I know that you couldn't you couldn't even begin cards. to fathom a guess of what's going to come off the top of Muzzy's deck right now. Survival of the fittest. Yeah, who's favored now, huh? Um, both of them. Yeah, I guess so. Um, it depends on that. I don't even know it's No Hands' deck, so it, yeah. it, it's it is it is Oh My Yog. Yep, gonna get the Fauna Power Oh My Yog. I like the sequence now. Cycle of Hatred is gonna be quite big. Oh, no, he, he could Cycle of Hatred still. That's insane. That's so sick. Oh my. Because he could, he could trade trade face Cycle of Hatred. He plays around the Avenge and gets three three threes and a clear board. Okay, so Muzzy's favoured now, in case you were wondering at home who was favoured. Because of this card being so ridiculous. Ah, uh, this turns a little bit awkward. You have to jam the Truth Seeker, but you want to do so much more. Not awkward, irritating. It's definitely not awkward, it's very, very unawkward. Unawkward. Yep. I've seen a lot of Hearthstone today, TJ. I can say unawkward if I wish. Yep. Fair enough. Hey, See? You are allowed to do whatever you please. <laughs> I wish. Actually, I don't wish. That could get me into some serious bother. I think this is. Good cards from us. 
think I think this is just a simple turn of play the, the Dreaming Drake and then ping. As long as he's keeping control of the board uh, for the Grand Slam on seven, then he's going to be in good shape, I think. Uh, yeah, I, th I think he, he swung it around with a hatred, to be honest. Got himself oh. enough board to be comfortable. He's got some stall if he needs it. He's just got direct damage if he needs it. He's got so much going on now. Mm. Um, I like to, I like to pick against the deck of lunacy when it looks like there's a chance it will go wrong, but we're past that stage, I think. I'm gonna keep an eye on it, obviously, but yeah. There's obviously always a chance it's gonna go wrong. Just not in this game. It's already gone right. All right, so let's see. Um, no Hands does have some a pretty insane Libram cost reduction going on and uh, yep. Lady Liadrin. So with Libram Wisdom drawn, that's a lot of uh, spells that are going to be able to be put back in the hand for uh, pretty cheap because both Elder True Stickers have been played. Uh, the sweet spot is when you can uh, get both Elder Tendons played as well because then your Libram of Hopes costs three and that six cost reduction makes it so you can Lady Liadrin and Libram of Hope at the same turn, which is a safe turn against a lot of burst damage that can come out. All right, Muzzy needs... Oh, my! Yeah. Hang on. That's a refreshing spring water. I didn't recognize it because the number one in the corner confused me. Now he's just going to draw a million really cheap cards. If you can just take for a second, TJ. I just need a moment here. Uh, end of Gul'dan, even more card draw. Uh, that was not as good, at least not for now, but it will Thank be you. good. Or at least it will have the, the potential to be good. Okay, sorry, what did I miss? Anything exciting happened there? Oh, Buzzy drew a million in the Grand Slams. Okay. Yep, he has three in the Grand Slams in his hand. Be oh, wow, okay. I, I had that as well. That wasn't you. That was uh, okay. It, it very nearly broke the game. Those no grand slams. Yeah, uh, you can't have three no grand slams at once. Let me. Think. I think we just learned. Yeah. No hands. What? Pictures taken moments before disaster. Thinks he's playing a Hearthstone game. Because he's got a lot of powerful things he can do too. Well, that, uh, I mean, this is the best play you can make into a possibility of a Grand Slam because uh, these Grand Slams are just going to kind of go into um, this 10 10. So. Yeah, they're just going to bounce. Well, they don't bounce, they sort of splat. Let's see. Muzzy Good doesn't man. have the devolving. That's That's what he really needs right now. Mask of Cthune, though, and there's no more Yog. Uh, oh my Yog, he's gotten rid of both of them. So Mask of Cthune, if it if it hits um, uh, four times on the ten ten, then he can uh, what is it? Imitation or initiation? The the three mana pre spell that deals four damage. Someone's a copy. Yeah. It just need it just needs to hit this. Yep, it's it's enough. So now he can trade. I think it's initiation. I think it is as well. Because there is an oh my god, so I just don't want to get them mixed up. Yeah, initiation, and that gives him in. Yeah, no hands is like, yep, uh, that'll hurt. So a nice pickup from Muzzy there, and oh, another lever of hope. Okay, <laughs> this this one doesn't feel anywhere near as good though. <coughs> He's um the Grand Slams now start to matter a bit more. Still, with everything costing so little, definitely giving no hands still some options to stay in this for a little while longer. Um, he knows there's, you know, he can get greedy with a lib booms. He probably isn't going to die for a turn or two, at least in his mind. So he can lib him a lot here, and then next turn play the the lady and lib him a lot more. 
Yeah, but there's going to be one turn where he plays Lady Liadrin and isn't able to uh, protect himself, and he needs to make sure that he's not going to die in that turn. That's like kind of the awkward spot that he's in right now. Like, he need, he wants a clear board for his Librum, so that way he has protection when he plays Lady Liadrin. I mean, this is going to start to get incredibly difficult, and that's him not even knowing that there's three in the Grand Slams in there. <laughs> now, this time it's a bit different. I was talking about the Grand Slams bouncing off or going splat, but now... They're, they're good enough now, I think. Yeah. Because Muzz isn't dying for a turn or two, so he can use these to proc shields and just generally you know, pick up damage and then charge the 8 1 in there, depending exactly what happens, of course. Or he can draw Soul Mirror. Yeah, and there's a big decision breakpoint with the Soul Mirror here. If he Soul Mirrors first, he can then uh, ping and then trade. Um, oh no, he can't because it's Avenge. Ah, that's awkward. So he pings first and then soul mirrors, but if he does that... It's gonna be... The Grand Slam, of course it is. Now he played that. Wait. Oh, that worked out well. Huh. That's a... <sighs> I guess he did the, the man on the breakpoints. Like if, it hit, if one if one hits phase, one hits the the divine shield, and then one hits the two two, then he gets to yeah. trade over at the end with the avenge, or another one. They, they, like, uh, on average, that's what happens. the The worst case scenario would have been two hit face or three hit face, and he's not able to trade his eight one into anything. But um, then you've got a big board, and you're probably going to kill them next turn with your next in a grand slam, coupled with the fact you get to put them into the minion on your own. I, I did think that at first, but then I saw the Soul Mirror and I'm like, Soul Mirror just seemed better. Yeah, Soul um, Mirror is awkward because he, he couldn't get any development with the Soul Mirror. Right. And he has um, got he, three in the Grand Slams to get played, so yeah, you're right. He did yeah. math and just got on with it as well. Yeah, he, he wanted development. He wanted to clear and develop instead of just clear. <laughs> and this is why. Because he'd have to then dealt with this lot with no board as well. And this is a lot of things. Yep. If um, no hands can, can get all the actions off in time. Yeah, I think he's done it. Right. The Fell Guardians. Not super useful at the moment, but <coughs> maybe to block some damage later on in the game. <coughs> the Grand Slam number two. I wonder. Oof. Yeah, this is just fine. Yeah, that one didn't go well. It, it, um, it went badly, and it's still fine. That's that's the thing, though. I don't, I, I, I don't think it's fine now because no one's gamer is going to follow this up with Librams. He can cone it though. Hmm. Oh, runs out on me. The, the fun thing with cone is obviously the Librams stay on the board and sort of incapacitated. See, I'm not sure about this one, <laughs> um, because uh, oh no, no, this makes I sense like because he, he can soul mirror. Well, I was gonna say because no hands can just Libram of hope these uh, these minions back up. Yes, they, he can't like penflinger because he can't trade these uh, minions in and get the Librams back. But he could Libram of hope them back up to health. But then Muzzy has like ping hit with a one two soul mirror to get rid of the Libra of Hopes and then can push through for lethal damage. He has a lot of little tricks that he can do. Cone of Cold can knock those off as well. So uh, yeah, the definitely a possibility. Remember that Muzzy knows like almost all of his hand as well. Yeah. These aren't surprise Librams for the deck. These are Lady Liabrin Librams, which I can't say anymore, but I used to be able to. And so he knows what he's doing. And 
It turns out the Cone of Cold pings off Divine Shields really well and kills one health minions really well. So he he worked this out from you know this this Cone of Cold setup from before. This is this is yeah. really tasty. Like it's still annoying, but it's the last lot of annoying, and then he's in the clear. Yep. <laughs> Stand against darkness. All right, so right now we're looking at uh, ping hit with the one two plus a soul mirror, um, and that is a clear. Uh, and then Muzzy can stand against darkness to refill the remainder of the board here. Um, his hand will get will have some Librams in it, but he has no cost reduction. So yeah, they're they're, they're a hindu enough rather than a help. Yeah, it's just going to fill his hand with a bunch of dead stuff. But it doesn't really matter. Because he's yeah, beyond the point really now where no hands is going to do anything scary. Cone of Cold's a freeze if needed. And, you know, there's another Grand Slam that he can go around the sides and just do damage all over the place now. Runs out on me. Reporting for duty. Yeah, this is just the... Oh, the galloping horse person, but yeah. My hand is too full. Uh, I don't think there's a way out for no hands. Um, we can certainly take a look. Carol Rome, a couple of pen flingers, and that's about it. <laughs> no hand of ju no uh, Libra of Justice, uh, nothing to be able to clear a board state except for just uh, some pen flinger action, but needs multiple turns to draw multiple pen flingers out of his deck. Has the Libra's to do it, but it just feels like he's never going to win. Um, he can just hope that Muzzy literally has. Yeah. I mean, you can uh, you can definitely no, no. name nine cards that are good for him, but yeah, the, the likelihood is sort of impossible. I cannot wait to read these. Move quickly. Reporting for duty. Just watching. No hands going about his business, but it feels a bit futile. He knows it, but as you said, he wants to be the best, and you don't get to be the best unless you play out some pretty horrible situations and occasionally win one. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely high on the list of horrible situations that he's going to face. Holy Nova! That's seven damage plus uh, twelve. This is incredibly close to lethal damage. Yeah, I'm a bit trying to work it out. It starts with him killing off his own minions to make space. Yeah. So in the grand slam number fifteen can can slam some grands. Yep. Then official heart. Sure. Put another lever on it. Push the eight. All right. I think. Uh, yep, no, that'll make a difference. Out of this one. Oh, Muzzy's getting excitable already. First, first yeah. game on camera. I mean, I I respect No Hands' effort, but he's got one pen flinger and six bells, so he can do six damage on the board. I, I guess technically he is still alive. Ah, uh, I don't even know. Yeah, I guess he is. Cause he's got life steal, so yes. Okay, well, Muzzy has a look of a man who wishes his opponent would give up on his face. Yes. Like, I respect you. Actually, no. no is he is he alive? No, because he doesn't have enough damage to do this. This is eleven. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, I was. I, I was. Oh, there's no way. Yeah. Oh, that's um, anticlimax.
But it's never it an is. when you see that, that smiling yeah. face. That's he's, so, he's so zoomed in, too. It's funny. It's just a nice little uh, mu- nice, nice muzz cam. Um, all right. Well, it was the longest the, the longest uh, deck of lunacy on two victory that we've seen in quite some time. But uh, Muzzy still is able to get there with the mage. No hands falls with the paladin. So Muzzy has the... Uh, OTK Demon Hunter plus the Rogue left. Uh, the Rogue is of the uh, uh, Tempo variety. It's the the Casey version, I think, right? Casey with the Alex Strauza, the Light Binder, and yes. uh, the Ten- as far as I know, that's Casey's work. Tenwu of the Red Smoke. So a very cool take on uh, the the Tempo Rogue deck. I think that it's got some interesting tools that Alex Strauza gives it. Life gain in matchups where you need matchups where you need that, or additional burst damage, which I say more often than not is is used for that. What do you think of that version? What do you think of the Alex Strauss? Like Raven was describing it, I I agree with him that it's just a big pen flinger. What? Um, in typical Ravenisms, but I kind of agree with that. Yeah, like, so There's nothing in common with Pen Flinger other than it deals damage. It's like saying, oh, it's just a big fireball with a body. Yeah, it's just a big fireball with a body, TJ. It's just a big gore howl, but it's a body. Yeah. No, it's not a big yeah. gore howl, because gore howl would, um, would be blocked by taunts. Pen Flingers don't get blocked by taunts because they never attack. Okay, well, and insert any spell here. There you go. Boom. Um, but yes, I do like the Alex Draws. I think we're getting to the point where there's a lot of slow matchups and, and planning towards it, uh, like just knowing that you have an extra eight damage in your deck at some point means that you can change your game plan, right? In some situations you're like, oh my God, my opponent's at 20. What am I going to do? Well, mm-hmm. you know, you can just pen flinger, pen flinger, wicked stab, wicked stab, and then set up for Alex off the top to win you a game that you otherwise wouldn't win if you didn't have it in your deck. Um, it's access to burn that Rogue uh, in, with the current core set doesn't have outside of, the, like I said, the wicked stab. So um, I've grown to like it. Just a big pen flinger. Which isn't necessarily the worst thing. So, but yeah, I mean, the, the the deck does lack ways to win sometimes. So an extra eight damage I can see being pretty important, like joking aside. And the minion, the minion, not so much because you, I think you find as rogue that your opponent can remove your minions reasonably easily. Like they, they sit around and an eight, eight, it sounds terrifying, but they, they haven't had to spend the whole game removing big minions, so they probably have something left to kill the 8-8, but the, the damage to the face is, is a big deal. Yeah, uh, whereas uh, No Hands Gamer is going to be playing a deck that can kill your minions quite easily, and that's going to be the Control Priest, uh, opting for a pretty heavy minion package with uh, both Blademaster Samuro and Zyrella for those kind of board sweep minions. Then Ogremancer, Malagos, and Cthune at the top end. It's not quite as greedy as Fled, who's running like a 10 minion <laughs> uh, super greedy control priest, but um, I, I, I like this list from No Hands Gamer, and uh, playing against the Rogue, there's a lot that you can do. You can go for uh, you know early Mind Render Lucia's uh, to try and offset like cost discounts from Octobot. Um, it, you can at some point if you see that the rogue opponent has pen flingers in hand, you could dump the pen flingers with mind render Lucia as long as you don't have you know some a key removal piece or card in your hand that you're gonna let them cast. There are some pretty cool uh, like breakpoints with this deck, but um, overall, I would I would say that this is entirely dependent on the early game and if the rogue can snowball. Because if they can't, yeah. then priests can stabilize quite easily and you'll never find the damage to kill them. One of these hands is not like the others. Yeah. Yep. One's no a hands, one's a rogue. Definitely You're right. getting rid of his hand. Yeah. One of them was good and one of them was not good, was more my, my line of thinking. And yeah, Muzzy has got the best two cards in his deck in his opening hand, and No Hands had the worst cards in his deck in his opening hand. 
Did, were you, did you see the joy that was the um, the no minion priest mirror earlier? Uh, no. Lorinda, come to EU, they said. It'll be fun, they said. <laughs> you go, bunny hopper, priest mirror, have fun. Yeah, that'll do it. I'm doing that again. <laughs> Nobody has a minion. You just wait until somebody gets the Cthune thing. It's the most tedious thing ever. There's actually quite a lot of intricate things about whether you want to mine render to steal their Cthune pieces and so on, but it is the only win condition. It's it's very strange. Anyway, you, that's you not mine what render. You what both steal here. the exact same Cthune piece. <laughs> so then that it just came works up. That anyway. was um, a discussion. Yeah, it still works. That was um, a thing that was mentioned. Nice. But this priest isn't killing nothing. This priest is killing lots and lots of rogue minions as quickly as it can. <laughs> yep. Good point, Lorinda. I definitely heard all of that. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I was teleported around the internet for a moment there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, basically saying that um, now we're playing against Rogue, not Priest. Yeah. All right. Coin Jandis, Shadow Step to Jandis. Let's go. What makes something real? Oh, ho, ho, ho. It's Burning Blade Accolade once again. That's sick. It's a 5 8 and it dies and comes back to life. It's one of the best cards you can get. And Muzzy is just feeling this. Muzzy's up for this season of, of Grandmasters, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. I mean, uh, this has been Muzz for multiple seasons now. So he's just excited to get on stream and, and play some Hearthstone. So... But another Jandis in the books. Uh, I mean, Muzzy could just clear with what's on board. That's how. Uh, that's how insane this is. Um, it just a dagger hit, hit, and then uh, the uh, uh, turn the uh, hmm. Rhino, and then Jandis again. <clears throat> One thing is is if Muzzy's expecting some kind of wide board clear, maybe he pivots and goes for something else, but Jandis is just the most powerful play you can make, and there's also some combat interactions that may happen, like Inara Storm Crash. That's insane! And Greybow! Oh my! This, this is insane! These look the best! <laughs> this, I mean, we say that about everything with Jandis now, because there's only three that are actually not the best, but yeah, this is straight up... You can tell from Nohan's reaction, okay, I've, I've been Jandis. Set him up, we'll play a different game. This is nutty. Yeah. This is absolutely incredible. Muzzy's having to decide, do I want to proc my 1-1 one, one, or do I need some sort of AOE protection? I think he'll decide on the protection. Yep. Yeah, I would much rather have the 1-1 the, the one, one around. I think the question was, does he hit in with the weapon twice and, and then Tundra Rhino? But it's the same amount of damage, right? Uh, he just saves more damage to the face. Oh. And no hands has just got, I know, a wing and a desperate prayer right now. Yep. I mean, I have Cthune is, uh, could be okay, I guess, at some point. Because it at least maybe hit the... Minion that's illusioned. <laughs> mm -hmm. But one of the yeah. minions that's illusioned is a 1 1. You don't want to hit it. And the other one's probably a Grey Bow. So, it so you don't want to hit that either. Consider. Yeah. Not good. Uh, Soul Mirror. So you can have the same good things after you die for the next game. You know what's going to be really good in this game? Alex Straza. There's 16 plus uh, 6, 22, plus a Wicked Stab, plus a Penflinger. That's lethal. Yep, it's lethal damage. Mana? Yeah? Yeah, he, all he needs is Penflinger, Wicked Stab. That's it. And the Dagger Up. 
because he pushes wow. six damage with the uh, with the dagger hit here, and then Penflinger Wicked Stab for the four, the last piece. <laughs> that was dead. He, he killed him on turn six. All right, Janus is absurd, especially a Janus that's that good. Janus, oh, man. Luke. Yeah, two zero for Muzzy. What was that game? I mean, the bits that I saw seemed amazing. Yeah, and. The Muzz cam zoomed right into the the hyperventilating Muzz at this point, I think. Yeah, that was uh, gross, I guess, is a good way to say it. I mean, he starts off, game one of the series is just Deca Lunacy on two, and then game two of the series is just the, the craziest ja pair of Janus I've ever seen. Um, now he's got OTK Demon Hunter left, so and he's yep. got some, some, some decent matchups to be able to win them with. Obviously, we uh, talked about Priest and how it... Uh, hinges on um, uh, Mind Render or Lucia a lot. Uh, whether or not he could draw that and throw away some of the combo pieces, disrupt. But um, outside of that, versus Paladin and Rogue, you can find your spots. Uh, Paladin, uh, it's a deck that you actually do have a good amount of board clears, and you can part ways with a good amount of combo pieces nowadays because uh, you can deal 30 damage in a lot of different ways with the deck with Talented Arcanist. Yeah, and I didn't see any Demon Hunter mentioned in the list of you know, things that might be nerfed next week. Uh, I've got a feeling we might see a lot of this deck next week, so um, a trial um, run for the casters. I just think it might be good. It's possible. I, I think the deck does well against aggro decks too because it has so much lifesteal. And I think there's going to be less aggro decks because there's going to be less need for uh, players to target mage. Right. Yes. Um, so I think yes, the deck will get better in a nutshell because other decks are getting worse. But I think that the meta game will shift in a different direction than OTK Demon Hunter um, to more like mid range oh, decks. Yeah. Uh, we'll see though. I could be completely wrong. Um, yeah. All we know is is strong hints that Mage won't be the same. So that's fairly obvious what's going to happen there. I think. But yeah, that's 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 all we got. So maybe it shifts a totally different way. But here it is, the Demon Hunter. We'll definitely see this all... I think we will see this all season. Like, all seven weeks, we'll see one or two people bring this deck. It just, it's just one of those decks that people... Like like Turtle Mage, people just go, this is a deck I like. And they just... Because they're good at it, they just keep playing it. Yeah. No, that's a good point. Uh, I think Turtle Mage had some, like, really good matchups that OTK Demon Hunter just doesn't really have anymore. Um... Uh, but I do think I do see where you you're, you get that comparison because they do have kind of similar things in the meta game right now. But once you just one game away, we'll see if No Hands Gamer can uh, actually play some Hearthstone in game number three. To be fair, he played a lot of Hearthstone in game number one, but it was just kind of futile. Like I think he did a good job yeah. of the futility and showing that he had you know he had ability. He just there was nothing he could do that was yep. actually going to change the game. Yep. In, in and this matchup, No Hands is looking for just one card. Yeah. And my assertion is you get it less often than you think you do. But we shall see. I have been known on rare occasion to be incorrect. Yep. Nice. Uh, Brightwing can get it. Job's done. Brywin can get Mind Render Lucia. I'll play with all my toys today. Because it I've adds never a seen random legendary before. minion to your hand. I was amazed. And Mind Render Lucia happens to be a legendary minion. So he's going for it. I've never seen that toy before. I'm so happy now. I wonder what that button is. Ooh! Corvus Bloodthorn. Uh, I'm sure there's a lot of people that don't know what that is. Correct. I'm one of them, but it's got lifesteal. Yep. After Recharge. you play a card with Outcast, return this to your hand. So, again, uh, the only way that this card is good is synergy with Mind Render Elusia, because the Outcast cards are on the other side <laughs> of the board. <laughs> um... I don't know. Auspicious Spirits, I guess. That one's tough. Uh, he doesn't have a way to corrupt it, though. And a four-cost minion is not that great. Could go for Power with Fortitude, but... Power Infusion. All right. 
Compare that with his Corvos Blood Thorn. There you go. One of the few minions in the game with charge. Charge, lifesteal. There you go. Have a good look. I just wanted to press a button and now I've done it and I'm excited. Good job. Muzzy's goal in this game is literally just to uh, find, find Skull and then find Lethal before uh, Mind Render Lucia is drawn. Um, and ideally try and do that all in, in a short amount of time so you're not like holding on to combo pieces for too long. Just in case Mind Render Lucia is there. It depends what kind of read you have. What's the pickup? Ooh, it's it Mind is. Render Elusia. That's a good card, TJ. Yep, and it costs one mana. Picked up with Insight, so... Uh, I think if No Hands could just show Muzzy his hand... Uh, yeah, Muzzy might just... Um, fold yep. at that point. And that's actually something that I know why, and I understand thoroughly why it will never be implemented, but it's one thing I've always wanted in Hearthstone, the show my opponent that I've beaten them so we can both move on um, feature. Yeah, I mean, it, it is implemented. Uh, you, you just show them the cards by playing them and then beat them. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I understand, you know, there, there, there'd be too many irritating ways to use it to annoy people, but... It would speed up a lot of games, particularly on ladder, where you, you're both saying, well, if he hasn't got this one card, then, you know, I, I can win. And the other person can't show you that card because they can't play it until turn 27 or something. Yeah. No, he's just going to kill him with this card. <laughs> yeah, it's just going in. Yeah. Like, I might have my mind at Lucia, but we don't want to do it the the easy way. So the timing of this, he'll be likely waiting to see a skull or something similar, because Muzzy kind of has to go on and hope that this mind render isn't a mind render. He'll have a good idea by now, by the fact it's you know it's not on the board and stuff like that. But he has to plow on as if it's not going to happen. At some point, he will skull, and then he will have naught cost cards in his hand that can be mind rendered. Yeah, but the problem is for Mozzie right now is even independent of worrying about Mind Render, he just doesn't have that much stuff to, to throw away in order to not only ca cast a skull with hand space, but also get the skull outcast, which is pretty important. Because um, the left side of his hand is the, yes, he wants to throw away these Illidar studies to make the skull cheaper, but he doesn't want to throw away more Argor Talented Arcanist because those are the combo pieces that help him win the game. So, looks like he's just going to go Philosophy Raging Fell Screamer. Oh, and that's uh, it. Now you Mind Render. Well, now you strongly consider it. Um, y You haven't seen a Skull Played. There's really that not that much with a discount. Without the Skull Played, I don't know if there's really a, any breakpoint that kills you. I mean, you, yeah, you, you can wait a turn or two. If you're not dying, then you don't play it, or, I, I guess. But you're, you're now yeah. in Mind Render full on. I better do it sometime mode because they now have a reduced Moax, so yeah if every turn you have to now count your but it, it, it's not a reduced it's not a reduced Moarg to no hands mm, no he doesn't get to play it cheaper but he knows it's there cheaper yeah I see what you mean he knows it's there cheaper yeah so it's he wants to wait until there's like fully discounted cards he wants to wait until there's a skull yeah um, or to to where there's enough naturally drawn cards in the deck. That it just becomes mathematically ridiculous not to do it. Yeah. But he's leveled the scores. 29 each. Heart of Cthulhu, sure. Board clear. Giddy yep. up. Six damage to all of the minions. Um, another Moak. 
trifecta of Moags. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know either. I'm looking at this thinking that, yeah. I'm waiting for Muzzy to have some incredible plan that stops himself from getting mind rendered here. But I suspect I'm going to be disappointed. Yeah. I think he. Maybe he thinks he has enough draw and can go for like Dreadlord's Bite. I have no idea. Yeah, I mean. He can't get there with minions. Because Priest will have infinite removal spells for minions. That's kind of what Priest does. He shouldn't be able to get there with full combo. He might be able to get sort of a sneaky 12 or something at some point. Like, pretend not to be menacing and then just cheekily 12 your opponent and try and get the other 18 somehow with weapons and minions. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm trying here. Well... Uh, if no one's mind renders now, there are still enough pieces in Muzzy's deck for him to win. He still has talented Arcanist, a Fell Screen Blast, an I Beam. Uh, oh no, he doesn't have another Moarg. He wouldn't have any more Moargs. Yeah, that's the problem now. So yeah, no hands takes the hand. And he's just going to get rid of as many things as he possibly can. He doesn't get the um, the Ogonoth, so play may continue. It probably won't, but it might. Actually, Muzzy can still win this. Yeah, no one else can't dump enough stuff. Right. Because he can dump these and then play an Aldraki Warblades. Or not, or play Fell Screen Blast, but he can't play I Beam as well. And he can't play Immolation Aura, he would have had to dump that first. Uh. So I was getting excited there because Muzzy's got a rally coming up, but it's not going to really do anything. They killed off it's his a Moark back, but so what, really? Oh, his board would have been killed off anyway. This is, um, this is weird. This is a weird, weird game. I think... I'm wondering if this is um, a mistake from Muzzy. He could have apotheosis one of these minions, which would then have a lifesteal, which is a thing. Instead of condemning? Yeah. I think one of the things would have survived the Condemn because it would be buffed with the Apotheosis. Yeah, but I think he was hoping to get a Moarg back from the rally because then he'd have a Moarg, so like yep. that, that would have been... Maybe his Moarg just lives for a long time. But he would still... Would, would you not prefer a bigger Moarg with um, an Apotheosis on it? Maybe you don't because Condemn doubles. I don't know. Yeah, Condemn would have just uh, almost killed it. Yeah. Uh, I mean, alright, let's count maximum damage from Muzzy here. Alright, so sure. he has Ilganoth, I Beam, and uh, uh, Fell Screen Blast of the Talented Arcanist. So, Talented Arcanist and the Fell Screen. He can't double it, though. That's a problem. So, Talented Ar the Fell Screen Blast can only deal 9. Um, then the I Beam would only deal 3. So, that's 12. And then a Chaos Striked uh, plus Hero. Yeah, he drew the Malagos. Yeah, All right. as he's done the maths. And yeah. he's decided that he wasn't going to get there. But interesting that there's always a way. I mean, eventually there wasn't, but there's always more ways than you're expecting in those situations if you really sort of go into the tank. If if Muzzy still had one Moarg in the deck, he definitely could have won that. Because Talented Arcanist and Moarg just by themselves make Velscreen Boss steal 18. Um... Because it plus two spell yeah, damage, yeah. so it's nine, but that's doubled 18. So just that alone, and then you, you throw an I beam into that, and then boom, you have six. So you have 24 damage just from that small piece of the combo. But 
realized that with all the spells drawn on the deck, he was never really going to chip away at Nohan's health uh, long enough, especially with Apotheosis in hand and a Malagos that he couldn't deal with on board uh, to get the job done. So, again, literally all it takes is Mind Runner to lose. That's the only thing you're looking for. You're going to lose if you don't pick it up. That's pretty much, that's pretty much it. Yeah. And then you've got to time it right, which, to be fair, is the one thing you've got to do. And no hands picked a good time, got the, probably just about the maximum he was going to get out of it. It was enough to make Muzzy concede. He played one more turn just in case, and that was it. And that's the easier one out of the way, though. He can, he can definitely lose with the... There's a reason that OTK Demon Hunter isn't rampaging all over ladder. But with two goes at it, you fancy Muzzy's chances still. Yeah, I do. Um, I think that the OTK Demon Hunter, there's going to be one of those games where they just draw the nuts. There's, it, it is a very tough deck to play. Um, it's even the hands that are quote unquote perfect. Actually, it's not about just like, oh, turn starts, play my card, turn starts, play my card, like Paladin, right. for instance. Um, it's a, it's a little bit tougher. You do have to manage your hand size and decide which boards you need to overreact on with a Moark, decide which combo pieces you need to use to deal with certain situations. There's a lot that goes into it. And he is going to be up against that Paladin, um, which you know means he gets time. Paladin set up this wall of, of annoying taunts and terrifying minions, but they don't actually beat you down as such. You, you get plenty of time if you are the Demon Hunter. Yep. And Nohan's looking for a, a reasonably aggressive start, and this is good without being exceptional. It's okay. Yeah, he has one drop in the hand of a doll, which is uh, the classic El Clasico. Um, but outside of that, not much else going for him. No Sword of the Fallen, which is the big one to pull those secrets out of the deck. You might play three four man sometimes with no with no. Um secret you don't really like doing that but it's a thing you can do commander i'll tell you one thing you really don't want to hear a power on turn two with this deck you really don't i agree with that you don't want to hear a power on any turn i was making the comparison yesterday that you used to want to hear a power all the time as pallet it was like your strength and now if you press that button you have just missed a turn oh Well, at least there's a secret draw now, so no hands will be able to draw a card and have a turn four play with the Northwatch Commander. So I imagine this is going to be... Um, he actually hand of a doll, and then if he doesn't pick up something for one mana, play the Galloping uh, Savior this turn. Okay. He's I think we'll two proceed. things for one mana, but he might save it for a rainy day. Ooh. She's just to open the box. Mediocre box. Pretty bad box, in fact. I wonder. Broom not really having any use in this particular matchup most of the time. These are the hands that I really struggle with, with uh, OTK Demon Hunter is. Yeah. When you have nothing. I mean, I guess this one is as simple as just... Hmm. I, I use double immolation order. See, that's tough. Maybe you go face and just Sigil of Flames. Sigil of Flame. Or yeah, That's what going to do. It's okay. Yep. Completely unspectacular, but it's okay. You could have waited on that a turn to get the the Murlocs as well, but it's fine. I wonder if he wants to set up a carrial roam then and uh, trade in to the uh, Blood Mage Thanos with the three three. So that way, even with Sigil Flame, No Hands will still have a board going to the next turn. Actually, a pretty big board. Or if just make the play that he was going to from the beginning of Galloping Savior plus North Watch Commander. Hmm. 
Well. Looks like he's going to do the, the carry of Rome play. Like you say, just to have some ongoing presence. And it's going to be quite a big presence because the Murlocs will hatch. Or whatever they do when they become undormant. And Muzzy's got no card draw, which... He needed to pick up something there that's going to whiz him through his deck because now he's just in survival mode and you can do that for a little while with his deck. But he hasn't got much going on as well as having no card draw. He's just got awful cards. I mean, he can get the philosophy out of the way, but... Yeah. It's probably going to have to be... Uh, that Moark plus uh, Immolation Aura to clean up a board in the next few turns, but the turn five play is most likely going to be Aldor. Really needs to find Skull. <laughs> that's the that's the big one right now. Yep. At least he can play in outcast position from any turn from now onwards, as long as he saves the coin for next turn. Okay. All right. Staying alive to draw. Staying alive draws you cards naturally through the course of the game. I guess is where we're at now. Sure. <laughs> and Paladin is, like we mentioned, particularly slow. Like it's just a lumbering deck. wonder why he's putting on the 2 on here. Um, because then he plays around... something. Dull Screen Blast. If, it, if it's Immolation or it doesn't matter because the Librem is free, so once it dies, he can yep. put it on the 4-6 the anyway because it's still attacking. Um, so, Fell Screen Blast, you're right, yeah. I don't know why you want to Fell Screen Blast mm. those two. Who knows? Uh, four damage was kind of irritating, right? Like, he might have chosen to take four damage off the board there, but now he won't. Muzzy's still looking for any card draw. Outside of Blood Mage Thanos, he hasn't drawn a single card draw thing, which is pretty much all of his deck. He has two Chaos Strikes, two Spectral Sights, Acrobatics, two Skulls. Two double jumps. Even Illidari studies. Half his deck either draws or discovers. Yeah. And he hasn't he's drawn the other half. <laughs> yeah, and he's drawn the other half. And right now he just he's he's not doing anything. He's gonna hope that No Hands loads up a little bit more onto the board and that he can Moarg plus immolation aura to kind of clean things up. But your your point's a good one though. He is, you know, he's been unlucky to be here, but the longer it goes, he he's, he can still get a very powerful turn very quickly, but it needs now to come probably next turn, or it might get too late. We'll fight back these brutes. Oof. Yeah, it, this is a lot of damage now. Skull! But wow. there's 7, 8, 14 damage on board. Uh, honestly, I, I, honestly, I'm honestly i just ripping the skull and hoping I live. <laughs> uh, I wonder, like, let's let's work it out. He can he can double Moag on emulation and get rid of a load of stuff, but then next turn he can't skull. Oh, God. If you skull, yeah. what are you trying to rip? To stay alive isn't cards that are already in your hand. What are the different cards you can draw? Uh, I mean, he could draw like Sigil of Silence, which if he's not dead, it helps clean up the board the the following turn. Um, Here he goes. Just more life steal, like I beams, fell screen blasts, uh, raging fell screamer is pretty good. You want to play that I beam before it does the thing where it becomes a one mana card. Uh, I don't think it matters. He can just play the... Oh, okay. Oh, oh that's, that's lethal. lethal. 
Yeah, off yep. the top. Lever of Judgment to the dome, and it's going to be two apiece, TJ. Rohan's oh. looking to break the runner-up curse, the, the group second place who don't win. And Muzzy's annoyed at himself for going for that, but I think he looks right. Like, if you die there, you're going to die there a lot, but you're going to lose that game a lot if you try not to die there too. So try and stay alive one more turn and maybe get it all done in one go. Yep, I like that. Uh, no hands. Um, I mean, he, he played his curve. Like, <laughs> not the greatest hand in the world, but not the worst hand in the world. And, uh, you know, a lot of times that's all you really can do against OTK Demon Hunter because that deck will beat itself a good portion of the time. So now we have one game remaining going to game number five, which means it is going to be down to the OTK Demon Hunter versus uh, the uh, Rogue from no hands which is a post, uh, rogue. post rogue post rogue with not too much fancy stuff a uh, double cold nice. neophyte uh is kind of interesting instead of what a lot of players choose to include which is like guardian aug merchants just like cheaper cycle with field contact that and a way to activate an octobot do a whole lot during this whole grandmaster's like I see people even calling for it to be nerfed on, on Twitter and stuff like that. But, I mean, you see a lot of things on Twitter, obviously. Um, but it hasn't... It's fine. It's good. It's been good. And I'm sure it's better than we've seen. But it's not been a major player in many games at all so far. Surprising. Uh, I mean, it's drawn a ton of cards over the past couple days. Uh, and I think that's about all it's supposed to do is draw a ton of cards. Has it just um, been quietly doing that, and I've sort of just been it it, not I really... I believe so, yeah. yes. Yeah, okay. That's fair. But that means it's a good card. It's a good card. Yeah. All right. There's No Hands Gamer's Post Rogue. Uh, pretty standard Post Rogue, but like I said, uh, does not have Guardian Og Merchant like we've seen in, let's say, Language Hacker's uh, Post Rogue, which we saw earlier, uh, that he had some success with. Uh, instead, opting to run for Colt, opting to run Colt Neophytes, which I think could be pretty good against uh, this uh, uh, OTK Demon Hunter matchup. It's just, can can he find the pressure? Can No Hands find the pressure like he did in the Paladin game to uh, make these decisions a little bit awkward uh, for Muzzy? Muzzy, can he find the card draw to actually do something in the game besides just wait for cards to come in his hand? That's something that um, I think we have seen a lot of, you know, not a lot, but a few too many non-games so far where because the fourth deck thing the way that this particular week worked out um people just didn't get a game with their deck a few times i don't think that'll be an ongoing yeah. thing i think that's just um, the nature of having exactly three decks in the meta game yep well no hands has uh coin jandis rearing and ready to go muzzy does have uh uh, Chaos Strike and Spectral Sight, oh. but... <laughs> it's the Shadow Step, TJ. Yeah. Uh, there is Immolation Aura in the deck for Muzzy, so... Yeah. Not the worst. Yeah, Jandis is definitely... Jandis. Definitely lowered in power in this particular matchup, but she's still pretty good. Yeah. Now the far watch post, that one is difficult. Oh, two far two watch posts. Oh, this one's done. Yeah, Muzzy doesn't like that one. I don't know what he's gonna say about the next one, because he's already expressed displeasure with a a snarl. Well, he does have Sigil of Silence, so Sigil of Silence will um, at least deal with this post. Well, kind of, right? Because then it's a 2-4 that can attack. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it'll dissuade No Hands Gamer, maybe, because it'll be a 2-4 that can attack from playing the second one. Yeah, because he, it's going to be interesting, actually, because if he plays the second one, he has two 2-4s that can attack, and then he has a coin and a Jandis in his hand for the turn after. Yeah. So he might just be tempted to, to rip it. I don't think he will, but it'd be amusing. It's a decision he has to make. This is tough. 
He wa you could see he wanted to Philosophy Spectral Sight, but then both the cards he would draw from Spectral Sight would be uh, uh, increasing costs from the Farwatch post when he has a Sigil of Silence up and could do this play next turn. All right, he's going for it. Yep. Two mana fell screen blast, two mana double jump. I mean, I guess those aren't the worst things in the world, but. Do it, do it. I just want you to do it. I don't even know if it's right or not. I just want to see attacking watch posts because your opponent made them attack you. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Because then he's got Jandis next turn two with a shadow step. So he's actually going to apply a ton of pressure right. with all this. I said it's all about no hands finding the pressure. This is pressure. This is two two fours. Yeah, and it's only turn three. It costs him very little. Like we used to play cards like this and silence them ourselves, and now your opponent's doing it for you. Yeah, go for it. Yep. Oof. Oh man, both skulls in very awkward positions. Yeah. Seven right, mana one in the awkward seven. Yeah, the awkward seven mana skull position. Okay. I'll play minions. You put it on the Watley. Yep. That's six damage. Shadow step that back. <laughs> so much stuff. A 50% chance to attack the wrong thing, unless there is no thing. Yeah. Just a 6 7. Um. Mm hmm. Maybe. You could try to Stalina a Jandis that you know is there just to slow things down a bit. Or yeah. you could take a skull, so you have three skulls in bad position. Then you're, you're not getting any closer to actually playing your own skull. I was thinking you talented Arcanist and then, yeah, fell screen blast because you get the full health, you kill the Jandis minion, and now you have the skull outcast with the discount on the far left. Yeah, this is smart. I like that play a lot for Muzzy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, now I've seen it in action. I can definitely agree with that. What makes something real? What's in the Jandis? Big things. Rush and armor gain. Yeah, seems like the two things that he could do with right now. I'm again, not so much, obviously, because he won't. Oh, get the enough. cult neophyte is just backbreaking. Oh, no, no, his skull cost seven. That was. Oh, jeez. That's it brutal. Was seven all along. He just uh, didn't know it. Oh, man. Well, you I beam the cult neophyte and equip Aldraki Warblades. That's. That's it. <laughs> that's your turn. Oh, you were hoping for so much more. Yep. Now skull costs a full seven. You're taking eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fifteen damage. Uh, there's fifteen damage on board. Wicked stab is twenty-one. Dagger's twenty-two. Wicked stab swindle into second. Wicked stab is lethal. Sure. Yep. And feels like that'd be a good thing to go for against a deck that can just combo you out of nowhere. Even though we're not really at that spot just yet, I guess. Yeah. There's something fancier. Efficient Octobot Brain Freeze? No, that's terrible. I, I guess you just don't want to go for it because if you do miss, they can heal all the way back up and you've just wasted your stabs. Yep. Rather just develop onto the board. Yeah. But one Thief into... Fireball type things. Ask of Cthulhu. Uh, counterspell is actually pretty good. Yeah, I like counterspell. Then hit him in the These face. Hosts aren't watching anymore, Teach. They are definitely not watching. They are just attacking. 
Not a far watch post anymore. It's a far watch kill. It's a neo watch post. It's just, it just comes in. Blood mage. Immolation aura. It's not enough. He's dead. And backup weapon. Yeah, that'll do it. No hands. Reverse sweep. Against Muzzy's deck that I thought would be, you know, one of the better picks, I must admit, but excellent maneuvering. Muzzy withdraws and no hands goes through to the semi-final. Look what it means to him, like the relief coming out there. Reverse sweeps kind of have that effect on people, but that is a competitor who is very happy with their day's work. Yeah, and you'd love to see that. And it's it, it's almost like no hands had at least some expectations of OK, OTK Demon Hunter because one, he knew the breakpoints of the deck. He knew exactly how to play against the timing for Mind Render, what cards to dump. He had Colt Neophyte uh, in his uh, in his rogue deck, um, uh, which yes, he was leaving up Mage and banning Paladin, so that makes a little bit more sense as well. But uh, a priest has a fourth deck as well when th th that mage matchup i'm still not super sold on it uh, <laughs> just the agony from muzzy <laughs> uh, so i i'm i think no hand should be very happy with his performance today. he plays a very clean hearthstone looks like he uh, may have had a little expectation of what otk demon hunter could have done um and a much different story from muzzy's otk demon hunter that we saw from frozen who just won 